Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela, if you're new here. Um, today's video we're gonna be talking about elementary curriculum for homeschool. Uh, if you are new here, I have eight children, ranging in age from 15 down to three years old. I've been homeschooling for over 10 years, I think, is this? Yes, this is our 11th year homeschooling. I certainly uh, don't consider myself an expert, but I am a veteran homeschool mom or a varsity homeschool mom, as I like to refer to us who've been doing this for a long time. So I've used a lot of things, I've tried a lot of things, and I've gotten really good at figuring out what works for my kids um, and also helping other homeschool moms figure out what will work for their family and their kids. So we're gonna talk about elementary school curriculum in this video. I recently did um, a high school and middle school curriculum video, so I will link to that in the description box if you've got kids in those grades and you're curious what we're using. And then I have a forthcoming video that will be preschool curriculum. So without further ado, well, actually there is a little bit of ado before we get to that ado, which is to remind you that my homeschooling course is back. If you are interested in taking it, it is a uh, essentially like homeschooling 101 type course, nuts and bolts, A to Z homeschooling. It's laid out as a six week course, though you're free to take it at your own pace. And of course, I do have a discount code for you as part of my YouTube family here. If you want to take the course, I will put that down below in the description box as well. All right, that takes care of housekeeping. Let's talk curriculum. As I mentioned to you guys in my homeschooling high school and middle school video, uh, a lot of things have changed for us in the last few years. Most of y'all know that I have a child with Down syndrome and I also have another child who uh, struggles a lot as well and school has been a bit of a challenge for him and um, it's been something that as he's gotten older, we've been able to kind of recognize that it, it's going beyond the, the typical struggles, right? I'm very much a hands-off like, let my kids kind of explore and learn and I don't push hard with things. But there comes a time when you realize that you're getting to a place where some of the struggles and stuff are not just a lack of interest, it's truly something more going on. So of course we took our son for some further testing to kind of figure out like what might be going on, uh, as well as helping us to figure out what the best method and path forward was for him in terms of curriculum we were gonna use or certain tutoring or potentially other schooling options if homeschooling wasn't right. That has been quite a journey and we're still not at the end of it yet. So I'm just gonna kind of share with you guys the subjects and stuff, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit. I don't talk a ton about like special needs homeschooling, but I do wanna share uh, something that we've switched Rosie to. Um, she's our daughter that we uh, adopted from China. She has Down syndrome, and uh, she came to us when she was four and a half. She's brilliant, she's absolutely brilliant, and it's been really fun to see her progress in school. And it's interesting how, this could be like a whole other topic, whole other, other video, but how, Certain special needs, because we can see them on the outside, it almost makes it easier to accept that other issues will come with it, right? Other learning challenges and stuff, we just accept that and we don't put pressure on the child, we don't put pressure on ourselves. But when your child has a special need that people can't see from the outside, sometimes it makes it really, really hard to uh, be able to, as a parent, accept uh, the limitations and the struggles and also for your child, letting them kind of accept where they are and just move from where they are. The pressure abounds um, when, the, when the special needs particularly are not things that you can see from the outside. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that curriculum, but let's talk about some of the, the repeats, some of the things that you've seen before and that we're gonna be utilizing in some form or fashion again this year. And this year, a lot is changing for us in terms of number one, we don't have all the answers just yet, as I said before. So things could change from this video in a couple weeks when we get more testing, more, um, we have a couple of meetings, things like that. So we are also utilizing some more online things for our younger kids, which is not something that we normally do. I typically wait for online curriculums and courses until my kids are a little bit older, but that's something that given the number of children and um, the needs and stuff, it's something that we're kind of mixing in um, this year. So if you're new here, you're thinking, good Lord, if you're not new here, you know. It might be a character flaw, but I just always feel the need to like kind of explain probably too much, but I wanna make sure that I'm well rounding what I'm explaining to you um, so that it's not confusing and so that I can avoid some of the questions and stuff in the comments. I like to try to answer them before you ask them, which is not probably the best way to handle it. Anyways, all right, let's talk about reading. So we have used All About Reading uh, for a number of years. This is truly one of my favorite uh, reading curriculums. 
Uh, I have found that my kids need a little bit more than this, depending on the child, not more in terms of uh, that this isn't comprehensive to teach your child to read, of course it is, but more in terms of excitement, interest. I found that by uh, sort of, you know, this is the first strike of the, the head of the nail, right? This is the first strike with the hammer is this, and then driving it the rest of the way home is through apps and other things. I have made my whole list and I am gonna do a separate video for you guys, sharing with you all of the educational apps that we use. I've been talking about that video for like two years, but I actually have the list written down and that video is coming, so. I promise I'll get there. But the reason that I like this, uh, this is uses the Orton Gillingham approach. It's also a multi-sensory program. The lessons are step-by-step. -step. You as a parent don't really have to do anything ahead of time, but just pull your stuff out and go. Um, you can cut things out ahead of time or blah, blah, blah. You can do things to make it go faster. The lessons go faster, but you don't have to. And the way that the curriculum is kind of written and the way that they encourage you to use it is that if you wanna do one full lesson a day, you can, or if a child is struggling or it's just a really beefy lesson, you can break it up into two days. And we do that a lot. We do that a lot with this, where we break something up into two days, especially the farther that they get in it and the more reading that's asked of them and the, har the harder that the warm-up sheets get that they have to read before the story and stuff. Sometimes the just the warm-up sheet alone can look very overwhelming to a child with just like all these words on it. So um, we really have loved this curriculum. I don't have an in an intention at this point of changing away from it for any of my kids. It's still our reading curriculum, but we do add a number of other things. And just adding in some other games, um, iPad games and, and also physical games that just help drive home what they're learning in here, help to kind of solidify these concepts and things for them. So that is what we have been doing for reading and we will continue doing for reading. And then as far as, ah, here we go, as far as math, I have already told y'all how much we enjoy uh, The Good and the Beautiful's new Simply Math. I'm kind of anxious to see how we'll feel about it because uh, we have kind of stopped using teaching textbooks altogether. Uh, I've mentioned before that um, another friend of mine here on YouTube has also talked about this, some of the gaps that she was having with her kids when they were done with teaching textbooks, going right into uh, like a high school math. And um, we, so we've started kind of switching to Shorman and Shorman also has some Saxon math classes as well, starting like before high school level. So I, what I'd like to see is if we could go from the good and the beautiful, uh, then into Saxon, Shorman and beyond. So we shall see, I will of course keep you guys posted, but I do love the simplicity of this math uh, curriculum. I love the kind of spiral approach to it. Uh, touching back on different things again to remind them uh, you know we've I, i'm just a big fan of the spiral method versus mastery i feel like my kids seem to learn best that way um you know and i like that it doesn't feel too overwhelming you've got this little box of games and things but as a mom who doesn't love it's not that i don't love okay it's that i don't have time it's way too much for me to have to do these elaborate games and setups and that's kind of what the previous good and beautiful math was it felt like so much every day with the calendars and the it was too much so i like i, I really like the simplicity of this and um, also the colorfulness of it and my kids really like it they enjoy it so we're sticking with it. We're sticking with it and uh, hopefully that, that love and enjoyment will continue. Some of my kids are actually inside right now working on some of their school. So what I don't have sitting in front of me to hold up for you is the Good and the Beautiful handwriting. Again, we've used this for all of our kids for a number of years um, and you know everything from their new preschool level all the way up to the last one, which is I think seven. We've enjoyed it. My kids have enjoyed it. So we're gonna continue to stick with it. Nothing much else to say there other than it's handwriting. They like it, I like it, it's affordable. We're sticking with it. Now, one of the things that we are adding in this year is a program called IXL. What I really like about this is, it, number one, it's affordable for uh, the number of children that we have that are using it. I also like that it does a sort of diagnostic testing. So I sat down with each of my kids and helped them go through the diagnostic testing. I like how it is set up because it's not just math and language arts. It breaks down each one into 
uh, more subjects of like algebraic concepts within math. So even though my boys, for example, are not doing algebra, they're not old enough to be doing algebra, the concepts of algebra are introduced obviously in many different ways. And so where are they at just with the concepts of that? So, so far, again, we're not super deep into it, but we are using that for uh, our two boys, uh, for, we're using that for Noah and Jonah. And we're also using that for our twins um, who are just turned five, so pre-K, K. -K um, and I'll talk more about that in the pre-K video. But for the boys, we did the diagnostic testing and then you go to, so you can just go to the, the main page and choose, okay, I want them to go to, you know, third grade and do language arts lessons in third grade. Or you can, after you've completed the diagnostic testing, you can go to recommend it. And then you start choosing lessons from that page. So you can sort it by math. I want math lessons based on their diagnostic testing. Like where are they at? What do they need to know? Um, and it's great for finding gaps. It's great for seeing where maybe other curriculums have, have an area in which your child is not at grade level. Or maybe there's an area where your child is far above their grade level. Um, and they you know, track them by these little stars for each one. And we did something a little bit different. We got a computer for our kitchen area and we set up a computer in there with headphones. When I'm working out here, my husband can be helping some kids inside and uh, we can do more one-on-one -on -one with mom stuff out here. And then when they're working on like that computer program, for example, they've got headphones, they can sit. So even if the other kids are scurrying about and stuff, they've got like a little quiet place that they can sit and work on that. And they really enjoy it. It doesn't feel as much like schoolwork to them. So we'll see. I, I wanted to try this as a slow introduction to online curriculum because I'd also been looking at some of Abeka's online homeschooling courses basically uh, where it literally makes your child feel like they're in a classroom they're watching it there's a teacher teaching it there's other kids around um, and that looked very interesting to me potentially for some of my kids for certain classes but it's also very expensive so before I made the decision to to give that a whirl with the cost of it and everything and it's not as flexible because it's you know, if you pay for a first semester, you have six months to complete that. You gotta finish it in this amount of time or you lose it. But a lot of curriculums are that way. So that's really not that big of a deal. I just, I see parameters and I freak out, right? I see like, yeah, I must complete this. And I'm like, oh, but what if I can't? All of that to say, we're tabling that for now. We're starting with IXL. I will keep you guys posted. I, I never get to like, you know, monthly or even quarterly homeschool update videos, but it is my goal to do more of those this year and share with you guys more as we go about how we're liking things. I will keep you updated on IXL, but so far my kids are enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I get emails. You can turn off notification stuff, but I get emails letting me know when my kids have moved up, when they've achieved excellence in some level, it'll email me and say, hey, Jonah achieved excellence today in this subject um, and here's where, you know, here's where he's at. I don't wanna make too many like fantastical claims or anything. We're just getting to know the program and where it's gonna fit in to our homeschool. It's not replacing, you know, obviously we're, we're doing our math curriculum, our reading curriculum, especially in some of the other subjects like history, science, some of the other things that uh, are harder again for me this year to be able to sit down and have a ton of time to do you know, some of the, like the good and the beautiful science units and stuff that I really enjoy. It's just got a lot, a lot going on this year and it's okay for some years for you to just say, you know what, I've got, I've got multiple kids that I'm taking to therapy appointments. Um, you know, we have a very full life and it's great. And there's lots of other ways that my kids are getting in things and learning things. I learn every year to be more and more okay with things not necessarily looking how they used to and things changing. That can be hard as a homeschooling parent when you've been doing it for so long. You get so used to things being a certain way that when they're not, you almost feel like something's wrong. And it's not, it's, you're just, you're just ebbing and flowing and changing, which is what homeschool gives you the ability to do. Uh, there's lots of different options as far as tutoring stuff. I also wanted to mention a few of the workbooks that we have purchased and enjoyed. Either we've used them before or we're using them this year. And uh, these are just a few different things that I felt like have been helpful. So this is an Orton Gillingham workbook for kids with dyslexia. And I really, really have liked these. We've used a couple of them and I do feel like they help. Sometimes as parents, we can want to like jump to the idea that our child might have dyslexia with like BD reversal stuff, which is, 
very common um, for children to have that. It doesn't mean that they have dyslexia and true dyslexia goes so much farther than letter reversals um, or number reversals, which is something that you will see in your child. Um, a lot of kids anyways, I would say about half of mine did that. I really enjoy when you've really got a child that it's, it's really a struggle. Um, we've really enjoyed these Orton Gillingham uh, dyslexia workbooks. And these are just great to mix in reinforcement. Uh, if you've got maybe a little bit of a shorter lesson that you're doing somewhere else and you just want to beef things up or just as you know, for our kids, it's part of like, if they're doing a workbook like this, it's part of some of their like morning work stuff. So they might sit down to do handwriting, do some workbook pages. I don't see these as twaddle or wasted time. These, especially these types of things, if you've got a child that's struggling, can be very, very helpful in just practice and uh, creating, new, uh, <laughs> creating new pathways that uh, help them to be faster and quicker at knowing what they're looking at, knowing what they're seeing. A lot of that can come with repetition. Um, so we've also used this, uh, this is from Newmark Learning, it's called Everyday Phonics Intervention Activities. Um, and this is, uh, it says ideal for response to intervention. So these are like five day units. It's uh, instant skill specific, systematic skill sequence and 100 plus activities. So it's got like crossword puzzles, sound, switch around. There's lots of different uh, activities and stuff in here. Same sound, searching for soft C and G. As most of you probably know, the American English is just a real pain in the butt sometimes. And there are just certain things that don't make sense. Um, they sound exactly the same and knowing which S or C, it's just, it has to be something that you essentially like memorize. And so if you have a child that's struggling, those kinds of very bizarre concepts that come with the um, American English language is, can be very obnoxious, okay? They just can. So this is extra practice for struggling readers. This one is from Scholastic. This is using a lot of high frequency words. Uh, again, what we have found is that when you have a child who's struggling, anything you can do to help build their confidence. So always allowing them to start off really, really easy. Lessons really easy. Everything they're doing should start off super easy so that they're just getting wins, win after win after win after win, um, and saving some of the harder stuff that stretches and challenges them to be smaller segments of what they're doing. So building up confidence in reading with high frequency words, just start to kind of build some confidence in knowing that they know what they're seeing, they know what they're reading. Uh, so this is another one. And then of course, this one is another Orton Gillingham. Uh, this one's just another dyslexia and writing and reading tools for kids with dyslexia. So it's not anything overwhelming crazy, but it's a good just like one pager type thing. So those are some of the workbooks. I'll link those down below, uh, but they are some of the workbooks that we have enjoyed adding in or are going to be adding in for extra help and backup, if you will. This is kind of in, in depth, so I'm just gonna give you the, the basic Cliff Notes version for right now because I am waiting still for some things to arrive um, to beef this up and figure out exactly how I wanna do this. Um, so the program that we are going to be using some various things from is a program called See and Learn Speech. They have like an online program. From what I can gather, there's, there's a lot on the website, okay? So from what I can gather, this program is something that is available for both parents as well as teachers. So this is a program that teachers use within school systems as well uh, in terms of teaching children with Down syndrome to read. It is also working on speech. And then they also have a like sort of introduction to math volume as well. If you buy the whole kit and caboodle, it can be very expensive. And because I haven't used it yet, I don't know if we like it. I don't know if it's gonna work for Rosie. I wanted to uh, start small. So we started by just purchasing a couple of volumes and doing an online subscription. And I also am taking one of their classes that is for parents. It's an online class for parents in helping to teach your child with Down syndrome. My husband and I are both taking it. They also have a number of downloads online that I chose to, and I just printed these off, but these are number skills, Down syndrome issues and information. So this is uh, essentially a handbook for you as a parent or teacher in helping to teach 
number skills to children with Down syndrome. There is also the same thing here, which is reading and writing for children with Down syndrome, and they are grouped by ages. So this is for ages five to 11. And I believe this was like $9 for the PDF, and then you print it off yourself. And this goes over principles for learning, teaching words and early reading skills, building sentences and grammar, teaching phonics, teaching spelling, and then beyond words and sentences, reading and writing with understanding. I'm very interested to see if this program overall will help us overcome some of the kind of uh, stumbling blocks that we've hit and that Rosie has hit with previous curriculums and things that we've used. I feel like there may be some gaps in that, so I'm hoping that this will help to fill in those gaps. I do also have a whole slew of apps that Rosie has been using, and I'll include those in the apps video, but I probably am also going to do a completely separate video once we get some time with this under our belt and I kind of get a, a good feel for exactly how we're gonna be utilizing it day to day. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much there on the website that it can be a little bit confusing. So I wanna get some time with it under my belt and then I might do a separate video that is just more comprehensive for uh, homeschooling with Down syndrome so that we can kind of talk about all the things in one place. Though the other thing I will mention is that uh, most of the apps that I use for Rosie would also be great for any child. I know that was kind of like vague and probably not the most helpful, but I wanted to share with you that this is something new that we're trying. I will link it down below. Um, and I think that this downloading some of these books, I will kind of link to these directly, uh, could be a great place to start because they're only nine bucks each. Download them, print them, and uh, go through them and see how you feel from there. Then maybe jumping into ordering some of the other additional uh, volumes and, and getting started on the actual curriculum itself. I think that that kind of covers everything. Uh, like I said, we've got some of our same traditional book work, but we are adding in the IXL, we're adding in some tutoring, we're adding in an entirely new curriculum for Miss Rosie. I'm very hopeful about this year. I do have, like I said, some trepidation about just in general, the way in which we homeschool changing a bit um, and going to more online things. But at the end of the day, I am but one person and I can only be in so many places at once, which is one place. That's all that I can be at once. I must let go of the pressure to feel like I must be the person teaching every single subject and I have to be hands-on with every single subject or my kids just won't learn what they need to learn. That's crazy. You can utilize all kinds of things to help you um, and help your kids, right? So homeschooling is so much about so much more than just what, you're, what curriculum you're using or how your kids are learning. There's so much more to it than that. And I know that, but I am human and I forget it sometimes too. And um, I can be hard on myself just like everybody else. I feel like I've made some good decisions this year and I'm really hopeful that my kids are going to flourish and thrive with these new things. I will be doing an app video soon and I'll keep you guys updated on how these things are working out. And then keep your eyes peeled for the preschool video that is forthcoming. And don't forget to check out the course discount code down below in the description box. That's it for me. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you again very soon.